So when I first started out on my watercolor painting journey, um, I was very excited to learn how to paint. I wanted to get right to the painting and learn how to put that paint on the paper and watch it flow and do beautiful things, which is all fine and dandy, but um, I didn't even think about looking into color theory or what um, the color wheel was meant to do for us. So because of that, when I was able to start actually painting some pictures that um, were technically pretty good, I was noticing that the color wasn't quite as pleasing as I wanted it to be. And I wasn't um, really understanding what was the problem. And then it kind of dawned on me, I had a little light bulb go off in my head that, that caused me to think, well, maybe if you learned a little bit about color theory, then maybe that would help. So um, I went out and found this book at my local art supply store at the time um, called Color Choices. This is um, Stephen Quiller's book about color theory, making color sense out of color theory. And I highly, highly recommend this. I see you can still get this on Amazon. It was published in 1989, and it's a beautiful book. He does wonderful, really beautiful work in watercolor and other mediums. So um, in here, he goes through the different color schemes. Here we've got analogous and split complementary. We got the complementary color scheme. We go to monochromatic. There's all kinds of exercises you can do in here. It's an excellent book, so I would highly recommend um, looking for it if you're interested in going deeper in color theory, which I really recommend that, that people do because it makes a huge, huge difference in uh, your painting outcome. So also in this book, he includes here a chart, and he's got the different a bunch of different brands here. This is acrylic and this is watercolor and all kinds of different uh, color names. Of course, it's not exhaustive. That would almost be impossible, but, um, and then here is oil. So we're doing watercolor. Also included in this book is this color wheel of his, and he's got listed a lot of different colors by name and their relationship to each other on the color wheel. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, the one, two, three of the color wheel, that's my name for it. We've got um, primary colors, number one. We've got secondary colors, number two. We've got tertiary colors, number three. I'm going to take you through how we get to those places and how we get to neutrals. And um, also want to mention here as it's sitting here, um, you can get this color wheel at your art supply store as well, and it comes in a smaller pocket kind of size, travel size. And this just shows you um, a guide to mixing colors. So when you add different colors to other colors, what you'll get when you add red to green, so forth and so on. And then on the other side, it shows you your... Um, complementary, split complementary, your triad, tetrad, and also there's a value scale over here which becomes very important as you're learning um, to paint. And the differences between shade, tone, and tint. So it's really a great tool for every artist, I believe. So that being said, I'm going to grab my little paintbrush. I'm just using a tiny little guy here, a number two. And my handy dandy ceramic. This is really cool. I like the ceramic, but, um, and also because it's white. But this is actually a serving platter that I got at um, TJ Maxx for $9.99. I don't entertain very much anymore, so it really works well for. Uh, using in the studio as an extra little palette. So 
What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with our primary colors and just fill in where they're supposed to go on the color wheel. I just drew a circle and then uh, came down about a quarter of the way on each end and drew straight across for my primaries. So primary, 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 and then actually this is secondary, sorry. The top line is secondary. And then uh, the tertiary are gonna go in between. So we're gonna start with a permanent yellow. This is permanent yellow deep. These are the colors I'm using and try to keep my head out of that camera. And I'm just gonna do a pie shape for the primaries. Real quick, just fill those in. This is a good little exercise to experiment with paint to water ratios as well. And then I'm gonna go down here with a lizard and crimson. That's gonna be my red. That's a cool red, and that'll be important to know as well. This is a warm yellow. But for this, this purpose, we're putting together the color wheel with a cool red, a warm yellow, and a cool, fairly cool blue. This is a Prussian blue, and I'm just gonna fill in this little area with the triangle, with that blue. And there are our primary colors, just like that, just like magic, they are on our color wheel. So when we are doing a secondary color, all we're doing is mixing up two primaries. So I'll mix up the warm yellow and the cool red the warm yellow and the cool blue. And this is uh, the cool red and the, it's fairly cool blue, but it's a little more on the warm side. So we can uh, say that's a little warmer of a blue. And the importance of that is because when you're mixing the primaries, a cool red and a warm yellow, a cool red, and a warm blue are gonna mix up more vibrant uh, secondary colors. So let's see what that looks like. And I'm gonna go in first of all and mix up my secondary, get a good mixture here and mix up the two of those together, a little bit more red. I want a pretty in-between color. So this is gonna be a diamond shape And it looks black probably as you're looking at the camera, but or at the video. But it was because it was so thick of a mixture, so I diluted that a little bit by adding some water to it. And so I've got my secondary color there. And see it maybe a little bit better. And now I'm going to come up here and do my blue and yellow to get my secondary. Should mix my, or clean my brush in between, I guess. Be a good example. A little bit more blue to that. So I want a pretty, pretty basic green. So we've got our secondary here that came from the blue and the yellow. Just fill that right in. And we've got our secondary on that side. And then we're gonna come over here. This is kind of handy because I can just spin it around like a, like a um, wheel. And now I'm gonna go for the secondary with the red and the yellow. Reds are very strong, so as in the case here, it was a little too much red. Trying to stay away from picking up any of that green. Now that looks like a pretty good orange, so I'm gonna add that to my 
secondary section. All right, so we have, let's drop a little bit more in there. Our secondary colors are all, all put in. Now for the tertiary, that's our third. We've got our one, our two, and now we're working on our three. Tertiary is going to be a primary and a secondary added together. <coughs> Excuse me. So where I've got this primary green here, I'm gonna add, or I mean primary green, primary yellow, I'm gonna add that to my green. And I'm gonna bring it over here a little bit, a little more yellow to that. So what I'm aiming for in this tertiary is a yellow green, and we're gonna represent tertiary with a square. Okay, so lickety split. Now our tertiary that goes here is going to be our secondary green with the primary blue. And that's pretty dark. Tip it up a little bit. And I'm going to cover, oh, I'll go right next to it. Don't want to cover up that writing. So now we've got a blue green. We've got a yellow green, we've got a blue green. And those are our tertiaries on that side of the color wheel. Now coming along over here, we've got our blue. And I'm gonna to wanna to add that to that purple. So I'll just grab a little of that, bring it on over. And that's gonna go right here. And that's giving me a really nice, warm, deep blue. Isn't that beautiful? Warm, deep blue. And now I'm gonna come over on this side and to the purple. Just kind of drag in a little of that red for my ter tertiary color over here. And that's a red-violet. Okay, it's pretty easy to do this little exercise and I think it's really important to know. Okay, so a tiny bit of that orange and I'm just gonna make my little square. of my red orange. Try not to worry about those things, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> I'd like things to be squared up. Okay, and then over here, I'm gonna bring in more yellow to that. So we're even more, it's gonna be fairly close to that, but. Still a little more on the orange side. Tiny bit more. Okay, so there's our color wheel. And then we're gonna talk about these neutrals here. Basically, when you mix any color that's across the color wheel from itself, the, that is a complementary color. So we've got a complementary color here with the yellow and the purple, the red and the green, the blue and the orange. <clears throat> and anytime you mix the two of those together, they tone each other down, they gray each other down. So that becomes a neutral and you can get some pretty good neutrals in here. And 
we're gonna aim for this little center guy and try to get a, a close to gray as I can. So I'm gonna get my primaries and mix them all together here in the center. I've got a purple. Now, if we look on the color wheel here, I've got my purple. And what is straight across from my purple but yellow? So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that yellow and mix it in. And what do you know? The three of those mix together give me a beautiful gray. And even if I lighten it up, dilute it a little bit, it's going to be easier to see. You're neutral. So one of the really fun things about doing these, uh, mixing your colors, um, rather than getting a gray straight from the tube, if you're mixing your own, you can get a little, um, not tricky, a little, can't think of the word, but if I added a little bit more red to that, I'm gonna get a little bit of a reddish gray so it mixes it up, it gives you some variety. If I add a little bit more blue, I'm gonna get a blue-gray. And if I add a little bit more yellow, then we're gonna come over here with that. So you get a, a good variety just with those three colors and if you're if you're looking out in nature and the, the world around us there's not just one specific gray there's not one specific black there's not one specific any color they all have variety so uh, when we're painting having an understanding of that and being able to mix up a variety of different grays, a variety of different blacks and so on. A variety of different greens is really important in landscape painting, but having a good handle on the color wheel is gonna help you move forward in your understanding of um, color and how to put it down and how to make a pleasing painting. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, Get get a scrap piece of paper and put together your own color wheel. If you want to uh, try to find this Color Choices by Stephen Quiller, I'll put a link in the um, description down below. And uh, like I said, you can I, I saw it on Amazon. It's still there. I don't know if they have a hard cover or it's just soft cover, but either way, it's a really valuable book to own. So I would highly recommend going out and getting it. Take care, you guys. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.